everyone. I'm Linda Nickel and welcome to the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. And every week, I invite a speaker to share a bit of inspiration, creativity, and their expertise in photography. You can find the schedule for our upcoming presentations on my website at lindanickel.com. Under Happiness Hour, you'll find the links to previous sessions on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe, like, and share. Erin Randall is an Agile coach, and you can connect with her at admeliorecoaching.com. But on Wednesday nights, you can find her here to help me keep things rolling. Normally, she will say hello, but she is sitting under a major thunderstorm that's rolling past uh, her rooftop in Montana. Montana. So we're going to skip the, the hellos to Aaron's. But. So my guest tonight is Valerie Hoffman, who is joining us from Reading, Pennsylvania. Valerie is a nature photographer that has photography treks in her area. And we, when we completely come out from under COVID, I hope that you'll be able to join her on some of her on some of her destination workshops. So keep an eye on her website, ValerieHoffmanPhotography.com. This is Valerie's fifth presentation for us. So if you miss the other four, you can find them on, your, on the YouTube channel under Linda Nichols Happiness Hour. And in tonight's presentation, photographing fireworks, Valerie will share a variety of tips and techniques with us so that we can all add stunning and creative images of fireworks. Valerie will cover gear choices, composition, exposure settings, and share some of her images to illustrate the kinds of shots that you can capture just in time for your own July 4th celebrations. So welcome back to the Happiness Hour, Miss Valerie. Thank you, Linda. Yay! It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. And uh, just for the record, because you're all like, what in the world is up with her head or what's behind her? So that's really a fireworks burst. It's one of the creative ones that I am going to get through. So if you look, see, it's fireworks. It's not, I don't know what you thought it was it's a, anyway. It's a funky headdress. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. Valerie, you've been, on, you've been on this program four other times and I'm, and I'm thrilled that you never say no to me and um, continue doing that. Continue doing that. Don't roll your eyes. Okay. So I know a lot about you, but there are people here that don't know you at all. Um, so can you, I, I know you're from Pennsylvania. I know you're a nature photographer, but give us like the one minute Valerie, you know, how, how did you get started and how did you end up here? One minute, huh? All right. Um, I've actually been taking pictures almost all my life. My grandfather was in photography. My father was. So it was just a hobby. Um, so I really had a camera from about the age of four on. I've spent most of my working career in uh, photographic retail. So I had always been, I'd been in sales, like good knowledge of camera equipment. Um, so I was up until 2009. I was working for Ritz cameras in upper management and uh, you can't love retail or maybe upper management, but um, I was there until they filed for bankruptcy in 2009 and um, lost my job. And from there, I decided that I really wanted to pursue something that I've always loved, which is helping other people with photography. So since then, I've had my own business where I lead workshops and am teaching classes and whatever, and just entertaining people that pay me. I do my best. So, um, so since then, I've been doing this. So. We good? Yeah, that's great. Okay. So I know it's really, you know, it, it's so, sometimes it's uncomfortable, you know, to say, hi, I'm Valerie and this is what I do, but it, it, it it's a nice way to get people kind of, you know, listening to your voice and seeing your face because once you start sharing your screen, it's, you're this tiny little face and voice. So I know that you hated doing that, but thank you for, 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 for indulging my request. All right, with that, why don't you get into your presentation for us? Okay, and as we get started, if you guys wanna put something else in the chat, so I'd like to know um, how many people have never tried to photograph fireworks before, yeah. or if you've, tr so you can put that in, or maybe you've tried and, you know, just done horribly, or, you know, maybe you're really good at it. So tell me what you think about, I mean, obviously you're interested in it. 
um, or you wouldn't be here. But that would be interesting to know as we go along. So, um, all right, I'll keep an eye on that and you can get started here. Yeah. So one of the things I've been, I have always loved fireworks. I just really do. And so I've been photographing fireworks probably at least since the seventies or whenever I really got more seriously into fireworks or into photography in general. And, um, I love it so much that I have one block away, a double A affiliate for, um, we have the Reading Phillies, which is the affiliate for the Philadelphia Phillies and every, weekend home game they have fireworks and i will watch live score on you know the computer and then race down in the seventh inning and be ready to shoot so you'll see some images from that but i just really enjoy it and i think it's a great part of summer and celebrations so i want to go through um, a bunch of tips i'll share my screen in a minute go ahead what? i was gonna say before you get started just because you asked that question um the majority of the folks in here have either never tried or have tried and have had mediocre results. There's just one or two people that have had success. So, um, you know, and I can, I'm, I'm surprised at how many people um, haven't even shot fireworks. So, so I think like my friends, I can't come in, but yeah, yeah, it really is. It's really a challenge. And, you know, so I hopefully will give you some great tips to get you started. Um, and go from there. So before I share my screen, I just want to go through a couple things. Um, some things that can really set you up for success. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a person that watches TV. I don't read the, the news or anything. So you'll want to search for any fireworks shows in your area. So you could do a Google search um, and look for that. So, uh, you know, there's, there's generally a lot more fireworks than on the 4th of July. And if any of you have a a ball stadium of some sort, they usually do have fireworks after games, at least minor leagues do. So you can look for that. Um, so some tips for you is once you have a night that you're going to photograph fireworks, you want to scout out the location. So if you've never been there, you want to, you know, kind of, you want to know where the fireworks are going to be shot off from. And you want to um, kind of know, is there anything going to be in your way or whatever, so that you know ahead of time where to stand and how to prepare for that. Um, you want to, where you stand, like I started to say that I stand outside of a stadium and you'll see that your best place to stand is somewhere where you're not under any lights, um, like a street light or anything. But that being said, I somehow managed to get away with standing directly under a street light for those types of shots. So um, I'll go through some different tips with that. But scout it out. Um, make sure that you don't need a tripod permit for where you are. Like if you are near some maybe um, government buildings or something, the minute you show up with a tripod, you know, you're a professional, they want to find you or whatever. So, you know, just maybe you want to know about that because you absolutely will need to use a tripod. Um, you want to be conscious of the place. So you want to make sure that you're not going to be blocking someone else's view where you're going to stand. And you also don't want anybody blocking yours. So how many people have ever tried to photograph something like at Disney with the, you know, Cinderella's castle and, you know, they're going to have fireworks there and you can get there early and everything, which is my next tip, like arrive early so you can, you know, scout this all out. But then all of a sudden, right before something happens, a thousand people are standing in front of you. So you want to be aware of that and, you know, make sure that you can avoid that as well as possible. Um, and then always have a flashlight with you because it's going to get dark and it's going to be very hard to see some settings. And I highly would recommend that you practice um, you know, making just a couple of the settings or have your camera preset before you ever end up in the dark. Um, so those are just kind of the scouting tips. And uh, let me share my screen here. Hopefully this all still goes. Looking good. All right, so hang on. And do be gracious with me, hang on, that I have, do have a brand new computer and Oops, and I'm hitting the wrong keypad. There we go. Um, it looks good. It looks good. Good? Okay. So um, as we're talking about scouting, so I wanted to, this was my first time I wanted to photograph fireworks over our state capitol, which is in Harrisburg. And um, so had I not done any research, 
Um, I might have stood somewhere near in front of the Capitol, and when the fireworks went off, they would have been behind me. So I did find out that the fireworks are let off on this little island in the middle of the Susquehanna River. So I set up across from the river, and uh, then I wanted to, you know, be able to have an idea. You have to know exactly where they're going to be so you know how to frame up your image. So, um, you know, that gives you a little, uh-oh. Why won't it let my mouse go? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, I am locked out. Type questions. Let me just try this. There we go. So knowing um, ahead of time then where the fireworks were going to be helped me to be able to set up so that I would have the burst in with the capital and not somewhere down the river. So that's kind of um, important. And here's an example where I knew I wanted there's fireworks over the pagoda. So Redding has there's some small mountains around the city and there's this um, pagoda at the top of the, the mountain and I wanted fireworks over it well the first time I went um, I was nowhere near it so I don't like this image at all I want the fireworks over the pagoda so that's why scouting can be so important because this is really um, what you're or what I was hoping for and so on um, the next time they did it which was a whole year later then I knew they're lined up a little bit differently but then I still didn't kind of like the side of the pagoda and so scouting a little more um, and talking to some friends we found a cemetery that we could take pictures from where I could get this you know two-sided view and the fireworks directly over that so where you stand makes a big difference um, for your images um, scouting here. So there was a carnival um, in town, you know, like a four-day carnival. I had never been to the fireworks before. I had no idea where to photograph them. I didn't want to be on the carnival grounds because I don't like crowds of people. I don't. And I don't like sitting in traffic afterwards. So somebody said, why don't you come up here in this retirement community and it's up on a hill? Okay, fine. And the fireworks are supposed to go up here. So you want to arrive early while it's still light so that you can stake out a place. So as I'm standing here, I totally like, I don't necessarily want fireworks over these buildings, but then I noticed this thing and I don't have any idea what it is, but it might be like an atrium in one of their buildings. And so I thought, well, maybe I can get the fireworks lined up over that. And so then zooming in a little more, once I figure out where the fireworks were going to be, I thought it was kind of cool, like definitely very different. So again, scouting and I, you know, I, it's okay to have just fireworks in the air, but I really like to try and find something to put them over that will make it a little more interesting. So there's just a couple examples of that. All right, and I'm gonna tell you all about how to do single bursts and multiple bursts. And uh, one last thing about scouting is while we were sitting um, on a beach waiting for fireworks to be set off over Lake Michigan, um, I just kind of was staring at the sunset and this little boy started playing with sparklers. And it was just, and he's kind of silhouetted. And that was like a beautiful moment. This is one of my favorite shots. So while you're there early and just kind of waiting for the action to happen, you know, be watching for things because people are almost always playing with sparklers or something else and you may capture some really cool shot like this. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about camera gear. Um, you can use any camera at all that you can set the exposure manually and you can focus manually. So that would be film. Obviously I shot for a million years on film um, and now in digital. So it could be anything and it could be any variety of lenses, just depends on how close you're going to be. So if you're going to be close to the fireworks, you should have a wider angle lens. And if you're going to be further away, then you might need a telephoto. And you want to make sure that your batteries are fully charged. That should go without saying. But the first night that there was fireworks down at the baseball stadium, I turned on my camera and I had 43%. And I don't know how I did that because I always charge my batteries. But so you want to make sure that don't go to all this trouble and then have a dead battery. Um, so check it. And especially if you're going to use live view, that's going to kill your batteries more. Make sure you have enough space in your memory card for hundreds of images. Um, in, in a 15 minute show, you might probably end up with like 50 images or more, but it could be several hundred depending on how long. 
And then, like I said, a very sturdy tripod, preferably one that would go a little bit taller than you because the fireworks are set up in the air. And if you have to stoop down and be peeking into your viewfinder or the screen, you'll really get a sore neck. So if you can get something taller and, and one maybe that you don't even have to lift the center column because that won't be nearly as stable, okay? Then in addition to the tripod, you'll want a cable release. So a wired cable release, not um, the little infrared wireless ones. And you don't want to use self-timer, which I know some of you do use a self-timer to trip the shutter when you're on a, a tripod. But you want to be able to press the button and the shutter open immediately and then be able to release it again. Hey, so, Valerie, Valerie, let me interrupt you. And maybe, so are you switching to photos now? Because that image has been up here for a little while. No, no, no. No, okay. I'm going. So okay. no, I'm about to get, yeah, okay. no, I'm about to get to this part. You want to stare at this guy for a minute? Yeah, 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 that's better than the camera. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing. Okay, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to, and then just go through some things. Um, and then, so the last thing, so your remote, and then again, which angle, which lens you use depends on how close you are. For that one that you saw, the Pagoda, um, you know, I had a 70 to 200 on there because I was kind of across, halfway across the city. Make sure your lens is clean, you know, so you don't have any smudges. And no filters on the lens. Um, maybe if you use a UV filter, but you want to make sure that, you know, the lens is clean and you don't have anything that's going to cause lens flare. And then the last tip, and you're going to find this very odd, but I'll explain it in a minute, is a black baseball hat. So add that to your gear list. Okay, so now camera settings. So I shoot um, almost exclusively, and I say almost because now I use an Olympus camera, which does, I do something a little different, but you want bulb mode. So on some cameras, like maybe the, not the entry level, but the uh, next step up, you might have a B right on the top on a dial, and that would be for bulb, B-U-L-B. If you don't have that, usually you will find it if you go into manual, and then you dial your shutter speed all the way down and whether your longest shutter speed is 30 seconds or 60 seconds, um, after that is generally bulb. If it's not there, you're gonna have to refer to your manual and figure it out. So, but that's what you want to shoot in, okay? And then um, what you wanna do is start at a lower ISO. So 100 or 200, whatever you normally shoot at, um, you want to be there, and like I said here, and then maybe around F11 or F13. So those are good places to start. So low ISO, um, you don't want auto ISO, absolutely not, or that, you know, will mess you up terribly. And then maybe start at F11 or so, and then you'll be ready to go. And you could put your white balance on auto, that's usually fine. Um, and one last thing, but I don't know that it would really matter, is to turn off long exposure noise reduction because that might, um, you know, if you do end up doing a long exposure, might cause a delay. All right. So then the next most important thing, now that you kind of have all your settings and you know where you're going to be, you scouted that, is your composition. And, you know, just like for any photograph, composition really is key. Now, if you're just shooting fireworks in the sky, it's a black sky, it doesn't really matter. You want to compose so, you know, the fireworks aren't really tiny. But if you're going to do any kind of cityscape um, or anything like that, then, you know, you want to take care of how you set up. And usually I'll be doing vertical images unless I have something like a bridge or a cityscape. Um, where I want to go along. So this one was a horizontal image. This is the state capital of Michigan in Lansing. And on the day they light the tree and uh, right after Thanksgiving, they shoot off fireworks. So you can see the tree and there's a thousand people standing in front of me. Um, so there you go. And I, I stood back a little further so I could get these Christmas balls in there. And I thought that would be neat. So one of the other key um, things is you want to make sure that you're going to be in manual focus. So like in this case, I would focus on the capital and then turn the focus off to manual um, and done. You can't autofocus at all. You'll miss all your images. Okay. But um, in some cases, other years I've gone vertical. So horizontal and vertical, that's kind of up to you, but usually the fireworks go higher and you might probably want vertical. 
All right. Um, one other thing is, you know, a reminder with the tripod, if your lens has VR, IS, you know, any kind of stabilization, you should turn that off. And the newer cameras have in-body stabilization, a lot of them, mostly mirrorless. You want to make sure that's turned off as well because um, any stabilization that's turned on could cause motion and you'd have some blur in your image, okay? So, um, you know, that's really kind of it. Now, here's another thing with composition is I was too tight. You know, it really, you're going to have to move a little bit once your first bursts go up. So when the first ones went off, I noticed that I was cutting off the fireworks. I was in too close. So I zoomed out a little. If you can't zoom out and you're at your widest, then hopefully you can take a few steps back because you really want to compose so that you have space around your fireworks. So, um, you know, and they will go higher than maybe the first one. So these were shots that I love but I'm very, you know, I don't like them, oops, sorry, at all because the fireworks is being cut off. And one more here. So the very first burst, you wanna, you know, shoot that and then you wanna look at that image and make sure that everything's in focus and that you've left enough space for the burst to go off. Okay. And, um, you know, here's a little thing with composition. So there's a flag outside of the stadium. And one, you know, one time I went and I got right up under this flag and had all the fireworks going off behind it. And it was the 4th of July. So for me, that helped um, create an image that symbolized, you know, our, our freedom and everything. Um, so just, you know, be creative after you get kind of used to how you're going to shoot. Now, we talked about focus. So if you look closely, this is not sharp. So after that image, then I would double check my focus. It should be probably close to infinity focus, but you don't want to shoot like all the, the whole show and them all be out of focus. So you want to check that immediately. And here's an example of why you need to be on a tripod. So this was handheld and you just get shaky and you can't get the whole burst. You know, sometimes my lens will be open for two to five or seven seconds. There's no way you can handhold that. So tripod, no stabilization, and uh, you know, make sure you have enough room and you're in good focus. All right, that's another one out of focus. All right, so now one of the next things that you want to decide with your technique is do you like this tail or not? So um, images with the tail, if you don't mind it, um, excuse me, what you could do is so, you know, you're all ready, right? So you'll hear the burst go up. And then as soon as you hear it go up, you press your shutter and hold it, okay? And that will now open in bulb mode. And you wanna keep that open for the extent of that one burst. So, you know, those getting started, just practice getting one burst good sharp in your image first. Okay, or, you know, a picture of that. So you hold it up and then when the burst disappears, then let go. And then when the next one goes up, you press the button. And as that goes, you know, after it disappears, then you can let go. If you don't like the tail, then don't open the shutter as the burst is going up, but wait till it's just about ready to open and then open it. So it's a tricky timing thing, but here's some nice shots just of a single burst of fireworks, just one in the image. And every now and then a second one might get snuck in, they'll shoot off a couple. And sometimes actually closing the lens a little bit before the whole um, burst disappears might get you some of the neat special effects. So again, it's just really a practice thing um, and a balancing act. But here are some where I don't, I don't personally really mind the tail, but again, you decide, all right? So just practice for the first bunch, getting a single shot um, all taken care of, and then maybe we can start you know, when you have that nailed, then you want to leave the lens open for more than one. So let me um, jump into this. If you're shooting something like this pagoda that is lighted, you have to be very careful that you have a good exposure on the pagoda, on your bridge, 
um, you know, on the state capitol, whatever. So before I ever start, you saw that blue hour shot where I was scouting. I take a picture and I make sure I get a great exposure of my, you know, building. All right. And then I make a mental note of how many seconds that was. So in this case, I think it was like two seconds. So now I know that I have to leave the shutter open at least two seconds or my pagoda won't be visible. It'll be dark. So single shot up in the air with the tail open and close. But now if you want to get more than one, what you want to do is when the first burst goes up, and I hope you're all still with me, you open it. And now instead of closing your shutter when that burst disappears, you take that black hat that I told you about and you cover the lens. Now really don't touch the camera, don't touch the lens, but just block any light. And if it's totally dark where you are, then it really doesn't matter. But if you have something that's lighted, you wanna protect that from burning out as you add more bursts into the scene. So now I'm waiting for the second burst. I have the hat over the lens. And now as the next one goes up, I will just lift the hat off and let that burst record. And then if they hopefully shot it at a little different place, maybe than that first one, and you're just trying to mentally remember because you can't see, I will cover the lens again and get a third burst. So you can see there was a big one here and then this one and then these little ones. And that's how I'm doing that. I have no idea how to do anything in Photoshop. So I'm simply doing that in camera by covering the lens back up with the black hat and opening it up again for the next burst. And then when you think that they're kind of overlapping, then you'll close the shutter and start again, okay? Now, if you're somewhere where you have ground displays, sometimes they can be really bright. So you just have to, you know, give a feel for that and do maybe quicker exposures. All right, and something like this. So I can't even tell one, two, three, you know, maybe five at least bursts were going on here um, that I had to cover the lens in between each time. And, you know, if you have some nasty bright scoreboard, you know, you really have to wrestle to try and keep detail in that, or maybe you just don't even care and let it go white. So it really is a nice balancing act with the light there. Um, now something else you wanna watch out for when you're leaving the lens open for several bursts is, for several bursts is, I don't know what you guys just, there's no color or rockets. It's just this white burst that scares you to death. So those really don't look very nice. So if they shot a bunch of those off, I would just close the shutter and start over again. But yeah. now here's a great example of, you know, the fireworks people that do it right. They set off these bursts, not on top of each other, but they spaced them nicely. So I have this beautiful image and that's what you're hoping for. So when you get a multiple burst, if it seems like it went right on top of the last one, just close the shutter and start again because you don't want them overlapping on top of each other. All right, you want them kind of spaced out. And again, do make sure, you know, they usually set them off pretty quick, but make sure you are peeking at your image and making sure that there is, um, you know, you are focused and you are leaving enough room to get the whole burst in, all that good stuff. And then, you know, another important tip is your fireworks should be, you know, they're very colorful and they should show that vibrant color. So if they just look white like this, you are overexposed. And so what you want to do is if you started at F11, maybe go down to F14 and just cut the light back a little bit. And that should give you, um, you know, a better exposure because you should be able to see that color like that. It gets brought out a little bit in post-processing, but it definitely should be there. And if they're still too bright, go to F16. Okay. So, but, and that's why you want to start at a lower ISO. Okay. So here's just a couple examples of doing multiple fireworks bursts um, in an image, which I like better for that. And definitely with this crazy like yellow thing, I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, so there. But here, you know, here this is becoming a jumbled mess because they are kind of over top of each other. So I would, you know, limit that to only two or three and then just start a new image. Okay. And this is close to a finale, but thankfully they were kind of shooting all over the place and they didn't overlap and I was able to get a whole bunch and the flags in there. 
And you can see that it was very windy that night. Um, but I think it's kind of neat showing the flag waving. So, you know, hopefully this gives you some different ideas of where you might, you know, be able to set yourself up for some compositions. So Valerie, let me interrupt with a question from Don. Yes. He wants to know, do you ever capture several single, I'm sorry, do you ever capture several single bursts and composite them in post-processing to create some really nice composition because you can control where each burst is placed? I do not because those that have been on my presentations before or just know me know that I don't have a functional Photoshop. Um, I, I can't, I don't know how to do it. So um, I don't, I do it in camera. So everything that you see in my images is mostly done in camera. Um, and I think it looks more natural that way. I'm not saying anything against it. And certainly it's nicer that you can place them at different places, but mine are all just shot in camera that way. Okay, so let me interrupt you with a question from Jamie. Um, so she wants to know, do you set your exposure based on your monitor so that, so that those don't blow out? No, never, never on the monitor. So I use the histogram um, just to make sure, but I have the blinkies turned on, which is where my whites would be blinking if they didn't have detail or my reds would be blinking you know all these colors so as long as I don't have blinkies and I can tell that that's what I base it on but I know starting at about f11 at ISO 100 200 is a pretty good starting place and I might end up down at um, f16 somewhere in there okay so let me clarify because uh, were you finished yeah, go ahead. I was okay. just thinking about that. Yeah. So, I, and I'm sorry, I misunderstood her question. Her question was, but I like the answer for the other one. Thanks. Um, she meant the monitor the stadium with ads. Oh, okay. The the like scoreboard. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was that question? Yeah, let me see. Um, do you set your exposure based on those monitors so that those don't blow out? Um. I would just make a note of what my shutter speed needs to be so it doesn't blow out. But one of the things, I, I don't shoot from the inside anymore because of that. Or you could easily just go higher and not even include something that's bright and obnoxious in your scene. Um, I would choose to eliminate it if possible, um, unless it had like a flag or something that you know kind of corresponded. Okay. But I would probably make sure, because I'm shooting in RAW, I have a little bit more latitude, and I am usually able to bring that um, scoreboard back in with the adjustment brush in post-processing. So if I didn't, and that's why you want to cover the, the lens in between each burst, because if I leave it open Burn really it. long, it's gone. Okay. So, okay. Thank did you. That, did that help? I think so. Okay. Um, if you were really creative, so this, this um, flag is um, silhouetted, so if you really wanted to be good and you had like a third arm, you could um, shine a little spotlight or flashlight on it to try and light it up. But I don't think that would work very well if it's glowing. So here we go. Now, here's one of those times where they just shot them off at all different heights that I could get this one with all these bursts and none of them were really overlapping and causing a problem. So I love the shot except for the tail. I wish I hadn't got that. And yes, if I was any good at Photoshop, I bet content aware could get rid of that for me. So that's on my list of things to work on. Um, but here's an example of what you don't want. So a couple went off here. They're really bright. It's washed out. So and you can't really bring this detail back. So this one, you know, don't let any more go in there, um, just close it off. One of the really hard things though, is some of you may be thinking, you know, if you've used bulb before, well, I can't see the screen, so I don't even know. So you just kind of, you just kind of are guessing. So that's why I say practice one burst and practice with two, and you'll start to get a feel for it very quickly. But if you leave it open too long, you start getting, you know, kind of washed out things. And definitely this one, they sent off a whole bunch. This was right before the finale and it just washed out. So that just ruined the picture. And, you know, since they went at once, I didn't have a long exposure to get the detail in the stadium here either. So that's just not a very good image. For this one, and I'm like, 
I'm probably a mile away, a half a mile at least from this pagoda. This was the 4th of July last year. And someone, I call this friendly fire, someone in the city, because we legalized it last year and it was like a battle zone. Someone set off fireworks right as I opened the shutter. And this fireworks was, you know, maybe only a block away from me and gave that really neat um, burst there. So that was kind of some neat serendipity. So. So I'm gonna interrupt with another question. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, any tips for avoiding smoke when you're trying to, to get several of those bursts? Yes, it's funny, that's my very next tip is, um, you know, fireworks does leave smoke. Usually it's not bad until the end when a ton have gone off. The worst time is if it's a humid day, like a really hot, humid, maybe 4th of July with no wind. And I've shot where I could not even see the fireworks burst before because they were behind a cloud of smoke. So I would say, don't even shoot them. <clears throat> don't even shoot them. Um, some of the small smoke you can clean up pretty easily in post-processing with either the spot removal tool or the adjustment brush. And if we have time, I could show one image with that. But I, I just don't shoot if there's a lot of smoke because, and there'll be some examples here, it'll just look really bad. So. Um, just as I roll through here. So here's a scouting shot and then some other pictures here. Okay, so that last thing I'm gonna speak up for the people in Houston. That was bad advice, Valerie, because a lot of <laughs> a lot of our people live in Houston. It's humid. So well, it wasn't bad advice. It's just the reality <laughs> of it that if it's humid and there's no breeze, like if there's a breeze and it's blowing it, you're okay. But if it's just gonna hang out there, just enjoy the show and you know, you'll see, you'll take it and you won't, you know, you'll hate it. So, and I have some smoky ones in here. Um, and for whoever asked before, I forgot already. So I, I, for this image, got a good exposure just for all the Christmas lights here. We had fireworks at Christmas, but that scoreboard was just gone and I let it be, you know, there's nothing I could do with that. So we're going to start getting a little smoke. Um, you know, so here, so you actually could get rid of this much very easily in Lightroom, very easily. Now, one of the other neat things is, so I stand in the parking lot now um, on the sidewalk, and this is the view I like. This is the front of the stadium. I love this dog tag. I love the flags, and it perfectly lines up where I stand for the fireworks, but sometimes people leave before the fireworks. So they're driving in and out and I may get some car lights in here. And the really funny thing is people will look at me and look up in the sky. And last time a guy asked if I was shooting aliens, like really fireworks. So, you know, here's some weird things that I've gotten um, just because I was there and cars and buses went by. So, um, and you know, if you're really close, then you may have, um, you know, if you're using a super wide angle lens, see how my building's leaning back. So um, you can kind of fix some of that too in Lightroom with the transform tool, but it's better if you're not right on top of it, like I was in this particular case. Come on. And one last thing, you know, kind of with where to stand and compose your shots. And you see, there's a lot of smoke in this one. But if you can be somewhere like over a river or something where you get reflections, that can be. Um, your... All right. So, and just lastly, to reiterate, this is that same Harrisburg skyline, but it was such a quick exposure, you can't even see the state capitol. So, and this was a little longer exposure, and you can see it a little, but that's not a good view of the, the city. And now here's a longer exposure. So you really want to, you know, take this into account where you are and get your exposure right on that. There's some different ones. And again, I'll do that smoke at the end if there's time, because I want to show you this other really cool thing too. And some of these I crop just like eight by 10 size or whatever, you know, you can crop your images um, and go from there. But one other thing that I really love to photograph is amusement rides. Like if there's a park or, or I mean an amusement thing going on near me, 
um, I love to go and just photograph them as is, but I will always go if I can on the night when there's going to be fireworks as well. So I have to find out where the, the fireworks is going to go and then find some rides that will line up with that. And then when you're doing longer exposures, hopefully the rides were, will be in motion and they're spinning and can look really cool for you. So then, you know, that's the, again, balancing act for, you know, trying to hope the rides are in motion um, and then getting some of your bursts over the top of them. And my favorite is a Ferris wheel. Um, so when that's spinning and it's really colorful, I just love these images. And when it really gets going, you know, it just kind of all changes. So um, you just have to be careful that you don't leave the, the lens open too long um, that you get that all blown out or maybe you step down a little more. So it's again, a balancing act between, you know, getting the fireworks and getting that in good. And then inevitably you're having a great time and then the ride stops and they start loading and then you start getting, you know, this and then heaven forbid all the lights don't light on the ride and they give you these bad shots. So you, that's just something you have to watch out for if you're doing over amusement rides, but it can be really fun. So here's smoke. So whoever jumped up in there, definitely at the end, you will get a lot. This was also midsummer, 4th of July. This is, it's burned out here, but this is like a man-made little water flowing and changing colors and fire, and then the fire works. And there's just, you know, nothing that you could do really with that, but take your shots and see if you can maybe improve it later. Um, and then here's one of the craziest things where I did fireworks. I was at a balloon festival, hot air balloon festival and the night glow, if you've ever been to that. Um, I got fireworks over this spinning whale, which was really not a great idea because he's moving and he was blurring he, she in some of the images, but it was kind of a fun thing. Like you don't see a lot of fireworks over top of a, a balloon that probably could explode. I don't know. So, but yeah, there's serious smoke there. So you just have to decide how much you can tolerate, but you can get rid of it in some cases, but you'll never get rid of this mess. So here's an example of just enjoy the show. You know, I had all these lit cars outside and, you know, this was at the finale and it was just, and then these things are going on and it was just a mess and a mess. And this is the finale. So you just wanna, at, at the point of the finale when they're setting off a thousand bursts at a time, just be done taking pictures and just enjoy the show. Cause that's the most awe inspiring anyway to watch and just give up because you will never get a good shot cause they're gonna be so many on top of each other. So just enjoy the show at that point. Cause this is just kinda, I don't necessarily like how it looks with all those booms and bangs and everything. So. I want to switch gears. So questions now, Linda, about any of that so far? Yes. Okay. So I'm glad that you are going to do this because I didn't want to get too far off. Going back to the ones with the state capital, mm -hmm. um, can you talk about, do you have any idea of what your shutter speed is? And before you answer that one, and then I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to repeat your settings because you went through that pretty fast. So I just want it then kind of clustered. A few other people came into the room. So um, okay. First of all, start with the shutter speed if you know it on the state capitol. Well, it's not about the shutter speed at all because you're going to be holding the lens open for a variety of times just based on, you know, the burst. That was probably a four second exposure at F11, though, to get that base one. Um, so I'm at ISO 200 because that's the Canon native um, speed and then F11 to start. And then that, you know, to get a good exposure was about four seconds okay. between two and four. Okay. But one of the things, so I said, it's kind of irrelevant the shutter speed after a while is um, you, I have some images where the metadata says that I held it open for seven seconds, but really my lens was covered for maybe half of that time with a black hat. You know what I mean? It was still open. So the metadata says seven seconds, 11 seconds, but it really was only exposing for a second or two. Does that make sense? I, I followed you. If you guys um, 
have any other questions for follow-up, just throw them in the chat. Yeah. Um, Jamie wanted to know, have you changed to using live composite now that you're shooting with the Olympus? She wonders I, what your impressions are. I absolutely have. It's a complete game changer. And I'll just say for a second, live composite is what made me, I've been a Canon user since I was four. And now I'm north of 50. I know I look 30, but I'm over 50. <laughs> so so it, it would take something catastrophic for me to abandon Canon. I love Canon cameras. I have a whole thing, but I picked up a little baby Olympus, the entry level, and a friend of mine forced me to learn live composite. And when I figured that out, that was the end. And I use it exclusively now for fireworks. So back up, what's live composite? So you guys that um, have anything other than Olympus, you're shooting in bulb mode and when you open the shutter, you cannot see what you're recording. So when you cover the lens and you get that second burst and third burst, you're only guessing. All you have is a black screen until you let go and now you see your recorded image, right? But on live composite, it's like bulb, except I'm seeing the image built on the screen. So I can see if now two bursts have gone right on top of each other and just cancel out. I can watch it build and that would allow me to get four or five, maybe six shots as long as, or bursts as long as they were at different places. And you know how I said, we're covering the lens so that our capital doesn't get overexposed or our stadium doesn't get overexposed, right? With live composite, once you set your base exposure, the only thing that's added to that image is new light so you can leave the shutter open for an hour and it will never overexpose your state capital how about that That's so i could use i could do star trails over the capital if there weren't light pollution and just let it go and get the trails because it's not going to blow that out that's the beauty of it so that was my commercial i wish i could become a visionary for them because i absolutely love the cameras so that's, that's pretty cool little, yeah, uh, it's way cool. awesome. And so I will, um, it'll be on my Facebook page and, and you'll make me put it on whatever my stories or something at some point, but I'm going to try and videotape me using that when we get fireworks going here, um, coming up this summer. That'd be great. Um, so um, okay. A couple other questions. Um, Karen wants to know, can she practice with something like a sparkler? Yes, you can, Karen. That's a great idea. So, um, and you can do light painting too. So you could use the sparkler to spell words or whatever. So that's how I entertained my workshop when we did the um, Harrisburg Capitol. We're sitting there maybe for a half an hour and it was dark, but the fireworks hadn't started. So we had um, sparklers and we had them going and we were spelling things and everything else. So, and in fact, if you want to hear really something funny and my guys that have been in my workshops would, would know this would be true. But I taught fireworks um, actually at a conference and I turned all the lights out in the room and I had these little lights on each of my fingers and I just had everybody set up right and go in bulb. And then I was standing there jumping around with these lights going so that they could practice their fireworks in the hotel room. So there you go. So okay. that was a great question, Karen. All right, Alden, who is a Nikon shooter, he does want to know, um, does, do you get a raw file in that live composite mode? Um, yes, I keep, um, yes, it's raw. Hang on, my brain got stuck, sorry. Yeah, it's a raw image. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any other questions on this part of your presentation. So then are you ready to get crazy and creative? I've, I've, I thought that's what we were doing already. No, we're taking it to the next level. So there's only so many thousands of nights you can shoot the exact same fireworks at the exact same place. And so now I um, read an article once on focus pull. So P-U-L-L. -L. And so I began trying that and it is the craziest thing. And that's how you will get results like the one that's behind my head. But kind of like this. Now, so let me start with what that technique is. So you can, you can't do it with anything like um, any cityscape or anything. You just want one burst in the sky. 
And what you do is you turn the lens completely out of focus. And then when the burst goes up, as it opens, you turn it into focus. And then you turn it back out. And when the next one opens, you turn it, you know, and you just keep. And so you're flicking the shutter with your cable release in one hand and you're out of focus and in focus and out of focus and in focus. And it is one of the hardest things. And I don't think any of the people that I've, I've taught are, are actually on this, but it is one of the hardest things to do, but it can get some great results. Now, if you don't get in focus all the way, you'll have a picture like this where it's not sharp or kind of like this where your fireworks isn't sharp. So you have to know where um, basically where infinity focuses on your lens and some lenses it's all the way at the end and you stop, but some it's a little shy of that. So it's really just a practice thing. But when you get it right, you can start now getting some really cool things. So this is just fireworks and then going from out of focus to in focus. And everyone is different and how fast you turn it will you know, kind of determine what kind of streaks you get and everything else. Um, and sometimes the second one will go off and you might get some extra things, but I love, it's like flowers in the sky. This one looks like a sea urchin. Um, some really cool stuff. So again, all I'm doing is the burst goes up and I'm out of focus and right as it opens, I turn it into focus and you have to get in focus before it disappears. Crazy. And this one you can see, um, I, it was like halfway when it when I shut closed the shutter or whatever. But you can get these really neat tails. And then this one they started setting off some ground stuff, and so I let that go. Um, you know, so that was sharp; it wasn't out of focus, and just this other one was out. So, so Gary's asking, do you ever do anything like this with zooming a zoom lens? Um, yes, I haven't done that a lot. So um, that could be neat. I wouldn't zoom a lot. Like it would just, I do that with Christmas lights and things, but I think with fireworks, um, I haven't played with that as much as I play with focus to uh, pull. So, but I may try that on Saturday night when we have a big show. And I'll show you another different way that I try it too. But this is like my favorite creative because they're always different. And this would have been like a really neat kind of gumdroppy one, but it had these other white ones behind it I don't like. And again, you could get rid of those if you took the time. So aren't these kind of cool? They're very cool. And you're getting, yeah, I, a lot of people are agreeing that these are kind of interesting and fun. Yeah, like totally different. You know, and just like that thing behind my head, you didn't know it was fireworks at all unless you've ever done that. And every now and then there's just this little one and, and I could never repeat it. Like if the same color went off, I would probably never get it the same because it's just, a, I'm just, and people are looking at me like, man, she's an idiot and has no idea how to take a picture because I'm like this and it looks like I'm like clueless, but yeah, come on, look at the back of the camera, buddy. Yeah, I saw something fly by in the chat and whoever said it, I totally agree with you. Um, they remind um, them of a Chihuly sculpture, you know, the glass. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. I'll take that as an awesome compliment. <laughs> but um, and look at this one. Like this is crazy. It's just kind of neat. So and then this is pretty cool. They both went off at the same time. You get your complimentary colors. The purples I love. So I think I just have a couple. I think this is my favorite. I just love all those colors. This will, when I have a home, um, eventually be a metal print on my wall. I just love this. So, and this one's pretty cool too. So again, if you start trying this and you'll have to shoot a lot of different, so if you live near a baseball stadium or something where fireworks go off every other week or something that you get to practice, um, you'll be in. But how fast you bring it in and out of focus um, helps determine how wide the colors are. And then this one, I don't know if I zoomed it all here or if I just wiggled the camera a little. So I am still on the tripod, but if I give it a little bump, you know, then you can get these cool painted lines like that. So I think, so 
if we have if we have a minute, I could show you um, two quick things you can do in post processing. Yes, please. Thank you. See, Linda, I got through all my hundred photos without you saying, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Valerie and I have history. It's like we're little kids that bicker all every time we talk to each other. And so this is kind of a private joke. She, whenever she does her presentations, she comes up with like 400 photos and like, you only have an hour, you cannot get through 400. And then for a week, I get to listen to her whine about, I know I can get through these. I'm like, whittle it down, whittle it down. So she was, she was having a stroke when we were practicing beforehand, like that's a lot of pictures. It's all right. I think I can do it. But the funny thing is, I never have any. But the funny thing is, I never have any idea how long it's going to be. So, I, so, okay. So, you know, I said, you know, I thought I scouted right, but my fireworks ended up, you know, to the right of the pagoda. And I hate that. And I didn't know that you could actually do this. Um, but a friend of mine did it. I think she did it in, oh, she did it in Lightroom. So we're going to do this. So I'm going to move the pagoda in Lightroom because I'm, all I can do is accidentally launch Photoshop. So I'm going to take the spot removal tool and I'm going to draw as if my, you know, big spot was here, my pagoda. And now I'm going to grab my pagoda and I'm just going to put it whoop, wherever I want it. And then I'm going to do another one where I just totally get rid of all this stuff. Bam, in Lightroom, I moved my pagoda, just like that. Is that cool? That's very cool. cool. Very cool. All right, and then I did that one that way. All right, let's find one. Uh, hang on. Maybe it's this one. All right. So one of the things, do you see any dots there? Well, here, so we can do this. So with all this smoke, so what I do is I come into the adjustment brush and I'll take my exposure down like two and a half um, stops in exposure. And I might bring up the dehaze a little bit. And Let's see, my flow, it could be a little heavier, like maybe, I don't know, 30 or something. And I make a brush that's, you know, kind of medium sized and I start painting. Well, isn't that interesting? We had a delay. So you could see, let me get rid of that. All right, so here's what my original image looked like. And then I just start painting over my smoke. And it's just going away. And you can make your brush this small. And you can make your brush this smaller. You know, be more meticulous and do pretty well. And your, your colors will still be there. So take a little time every time you start again. You know, some of them might be hard. But, you know, just taking down the exposure and um, bringing up the dehaze a little. And you can do a lot to clean that up. So... You know, I could even do a little bit more right here. So again, I want to do as much as I can in Lightroom because I don't know how to do anything anywhere else yet. And that's how easy. And then there you have that. So all that smoke, as long as it's not all around your image, you know, like in it, um, you could clean that up pretty well. So let me go back to that final screen. So more questions? Um, so before you get to your final screen, okay. can, can you do this favor of repeating what all your settings were going down from when we start with bulb to, so that we kind of mm -hmm. have them grouped in one place one more time? Yeah. So I start with 100 or 200 ISO, never auto ISO, just 100 or 200 ISO. Okay. And you may decide that based on whatever that the native ISO is for your camera. Nikons, it's 100. Canons, it's 200. It doesn't matter. That's where you get the best results. Then I will start at F11. I just set my aperture at F11. And my camera is on bulb. However, you know, I can set that. 
it's on the B. So I'm not setting a shutter speed. The shutter speed is based on how long I hold my cable release and keep it open. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's going to be different for every different one based on, you know, it'll be longer if I put three or four bursts in it. So, but if you want to see, like, for instance, I can bring up my data and this one, my data and this one was, so I ended up having to like, if that, if that 11 gives me some things that are blown out, then I'll go to 14 or go to 16. But I know for a fact that this wasn't open for six seconds that I probably had, you know, the hat over it a little. So same here, this wasn't 16 seconds, you know, I was open for maybe three or four, whatever it took to get me a good exposure on the capital and then covering the lens in between bursts each time. But the camera saying, you know, I'm open for 16 seconds. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so. So, you know, basically I know that at least three seconds gives me this good exposure on the pagoda. And then I'm just covering in between so that I don't blow it out. And again, it can be a little bright, but as long as I can bring it back in, and that's really why you want to shoot in raw so that you can, you know, mess with this. Because a lot of times some of your bursts are going to be too bright and you need to bring that down a little and your JPEGs will not live through that very well. So... Other questions? Yeah. So do you have a lens that you would recommend for um, shooting fireworks? I do. So all my Canons, um, I never was switched to full frame. So these were like all with the 7D Mark II. And I love super wide shooting. You know that anyway, when we played in Valley of Fire and I was showing you what I'm really into. So I bought the Tokina 11 to 16. So for a crop sensor camera, um, the Takin is only $4.99 versus Canon's, and it's a 2.8, so versus Canon's $16.99. It's a no-brainer. It's a razor-sharp lens, and it has amazing little starbursts. If you're a full-frame person, uh, I think it's like a 16 to 35-ish. Because okay. 11 would give you, you know, like vignetting or curving. Okay. And then for mirrorless, it's a eight millimeter, seven or eight, micro four thirds anyway. So again, the other mirrorless are either APS or full frame. Okay, great. Um, okay, so why don't you show us your last screen? And guys, if you wanna um, screenshot this, you can do that and that'll give you Valerie's information. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Yeah, so I would love, you know, to have everybody keep in touch. You can feel free to, um, you can email me right through my website, or I should have added it on there. Linda, you could put my email if you have it right there, like in the chat, or I could do it. Um, okay, because you can feel free to send me a note, and I hope to make a video. If you definitely follow my, I have a Facebook page um, for my photography, and you know, that's where a video will end up and some other details. Great. So, okay. so let me, get, yeah, let me get you to take down your screen and let me properly thank you for another wonderful, useful, uh, chock full of information presentation that you did for us. Um, Valerie, I give you a hard time because it's easy and fun, but, uh, you know, truly it takes time for you to put these presentations together, um, even though you've been taking firework photos for decades, literally decades, and you had a bunch of them to show off. Um, I, I personally got got excited about the the, the the creative ones that look like flowers because that's kind of what I'm into today. Um, and that just made fireworks, all right, maybe I do want to go out <laughs> next weekend and, and look for some. So thank you for, for, for joining us yet again. Um, anything you want to close out before I say good night to you and, and, and shut down, shut you down? Uh, I would just say it's totally my pleasure. I love it. And, you know, I want to say to you guys, especially those, some of the regulars, um, I know that I disappeared for a couple of months and it's been some of the, if I can say the hardest months maybe of my life. And I had a lot of fires burning at once and lost someone I loved. And, and it's, you know, it's just been really crazy. 
So um, I have missed you guys. I've missed seeing the presentations. I've missed being part of it. So I, I'm just, you know, happy to be able to keep in touch again. So I just really appreciate you guys and your encouragement. And I, I love doing this. I love to help people. And as soon as we're out of this COVID, when you say come, I would love to lead some workshops, come out and meet all you guys face to face, That at least during Texas. Yeah. Um, and I'll go wherever, you know, come, you know, find the rest of you. So. <laughs> Valerie, thanks a lot for coming and, and thank you for doing this presentation because um, we had talked about this. I don't, I don't even know, but like months and months, months earlier. And I thought July 4th, let's do one on fireworks. And when it was time to, to get you to come up with a, a topic and you said, remember fireworks? And I thought, oh my gosh, it's perfect timing. So um, couldn't have worked out better for, for, for us. To have yeah, and let me say, since most of you have not done it, it is really challenging. It is. So be give yourself grace. Just, you know, you're going to get some bad ones, but just get practiced and then move up to the, the crazy ones, you know, after you get everything else perfected and, and just have fun with it. Like, don't lose track of the fact that it's a beautiful celebration and enjoy it, too. Yeah. So. And guys, as you are, as you're um, capturing these images and that and you're and you're kind of proud of what you're doing, feel free to tag Valerie, um, especially if you're on Instagram, because oh, that way, yeah, that way she can see what you did and, and maybe copy your technique. <laughs> All right, Valerie, if you guys, um, thank you again. If you guys want to connect with Valerie, you can reach her at ValerieHoffmanPhotography.com. And if you're on Instagram, look for her at, at Valerie Hoffman Photography. And if you were here last week, you had the opportunity to meet Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, Estres Suarez. Estres talked about street photography and afterwards he gave away a portfolio review session. And I wanted to announce that the winner of that prize um, is Christina Levitt. So if you've been working on your images and you're ready to take the next step, to polish your photography portfolio, I know that Estra can help you as well. So please consider reaching out to him at estras.com. Next week, my guest is an author. He's also an Emmy. He's also won an Emmy for his work on a documentary film and his photographs have been exhibited and collected by museums throughout the country. His list of credits are way too long for me to mention, but I hope that you join us for into the Great Light, a conversation with photographer Craig Varjabedian. Until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon. Mm -hmm.